Hey there, this is your teacher, Mr. H, and you're watching History in a Hoodie. Today's episode is about economic systems in Africa, where we will learn all about how countries make money. I can't wait to find out, so let's get the show started. What are we learning about today? The standard for today's lesson asks the students to compare how traditional, command, and market economies answer the basic economic questions. We will also explain that countries have a mixed economic system located on a continuum between pure market and pure command. Finally, we will compare and contrast the economic systems in South Africa, Nigeria, and Kenya. Before we start, let's go over some vocabulary for today's lesson. A consumer is a person who purchases goods and services. An economic continuum graph is a display of the range of mixed economies. Utilities are services that are provided to the public. Much of this video should sound familiar because two of the standards are word-for-word -word re repeats from earlier this year. You should already understand the three basic economic systems and how they are represented on a continuum, so we will briefly review these topics before exploring how they appear in African countries. There are three basic economic systems, market, command, and traditional. Traditional economies are never used for whole countries, only ever found in small remote villages where bartering and trading are still common. The big systems are market and command. A market economy is described by businesses and consumers making the decisions about what to buy and sell. A business can decide what they are going to produce or what service they will offer, and the business will also decide how much they are willing to sell their product or service for. The consumer, you and me, will make a decision to buy or not to buy based on the product and price. Command economies are kind of the opposite of market economies. Instead of businesses and consumers having the freedom to decide for themselves, the government dictates everything to do with the economy. Government planners decide what each company will produce and the price that it will be sold for. Consumers are told what they can and cannot purchase. All told, not a ton of choice for everyday citizens in a true command economy. But there is no such thing as a country that is truly command or truly market. Every country in the world has some qualities of market and some qualities of command, which means that every country in the world is actually a mixed economy. How much command or how much market is really the question, and we display that answer on an economic continuum graph. Countries closer to the market side of the continuum graph will have a mostly free economy with just some government intervention in certain areas of the economy. For example, a country may allow most businesses to do what they want, but utilities like water, electric, and sewage are run by the government to make sure every person gets clean and safe access to water and power. On the other hand, some countries are closer to the command side and have a mostly controlled economy with just some business freedoms. This usually means that people in the country are still under government control, but some businesses are allowed to participate in international trade under supervision by government officials. How much economic freedom and how much government control is a balance each government must choose. Too much freedom, meaning no rules, and businesses can possibly cause harm to their workers, consumers, or local environments. Too much control, meaning many rules, and businesses are unable to make profit or creative people lose the encouragement to invent new ideas. Those are the difficult decisions governments must make all the time. So what? What are the economies in African countries like? Going back to our economic continuum graph, I am now going to place our three countries on it to represent how much freedom or control each government has in the nation's economies. South Africa is considered moderately free. The role of the government is relatively uninvolved in business. The government has ended most unnecessary price controls, but there are still some government-run businesses that need to be fixed. Nigeria is considered mostly unfree, making it a mixed but leaning command economy. There is a lot of government interference in the economy. The major industry, oil, is run mostly by the government and international businesses, so local businesses and consumers do not see much results from that industry. Kenya is also considered mostly unfree, also leaning command. The government confiscates land and property that is not benefiting the economy. 
The government has many economic problems, including poor national budgeting, over-reliance on trade, and illegal child labor practices within the country. Those three countries, South Africa, Nigeria, and Kenya, represent some of the more established nations in Africa and are on the stronger end of economic success in the continent. There are some other countries like Zimbabwe, Eritrea, and Sudan that suffer worse economically because of much more significant problems in their governments. Wow, so learning about African economies is really important for us to understand. I'm glad we learned it today. Are you ready for some review questions? Kamal manages an automobile factory. If he lives in a country that has a command economy... Which describes how most countries around the world answer basic economic questions. In the country of Mauritania, most economic decisions are made based on supply and demand. Businesses are motivated by profits and competition determines prices. There is a small amount of government regulation, but consumers usually have a great deal of choice. Where would this country be positioned on the economic continuum found above? Nigeria's government controls its oil industry, but citizens can start their own businesses. Which economic system does Nigeria have? Although Nigeria has an abundance of natural resources, a great number of people live in poverty. Why is this true? I hope all of you learned a lot from today's episode of History in a Hoodie about the mixed economies of Africa. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Just kidding, I don't care about that stuff. But do make sure you study this lesson. Bye now.